Thank you, Gilbert, and welcome everyone. Uh, I will run through some slides that uh, give an introduction to my company. And then I look forward to taking some questions through Gilbert at the end. So again, my company is called EV Nickel, and we are focused on the Shaw Dome near Timmins, Ontario. I'll be making some forward-looking statements today, so it's important to keep in mind uh, considerations for those. My background, uh, I run EV Nickel in addition to a company called Rogue Resources, which is another publicly traded Canadian mining company. Uh, EV Nickel was spun out from Rogue Resources. Rogue Resources is a small junior that is about 40% uh, held by friends and family. We run it kind of like a private company. It has cash flowing limestone quarries in Southern Ontario. And we spun out our nickel asset into this new company, which I'm really excited to tell you about. My background is I've been in mining for about 15 years. Uh, I helped run Kinross Gold, which is a large gold miner. And then I went into the juniors after that. Uh, prior to Kinross, I used to work in consulting and in capital markets. So I worked at Bain um, and I used to work in New York at Lehman Brothers, where I started my career. I graduated from Harvard in undergraduate uh, in the U.S. and I did uh, my master's at Cambridge in the U.K. My, my background is somewhat eclectic. I am not an engineer, not a geologist. I'm a general business person. And I'll walk you through how this EV nickel, this opportunity now, is really uh, coming together of many of my experiences uh, and skills from my past career. So to summarize, EV nickel is going after this increased demand with the new demand category of electric vehicles coming on for nickel. Electric vehicles and this new demand in the nickel segment want the cleanest possible metals. And I'm going to talk to you about our Langmuir project in Canada on the Shaw Dome, which has high grade sulfide nickel. EV Nickel acquired 100% of the Langmuir project from Rogue Resources, which is a separate company that I also run. Rogue Resources remains one of the largest shareholders in EV Nickel. EV Nickel has a very interesting starter resource referred to as the W4 deposit, which is 15 million pounds of 1% class one sulfide nickel. So it's very good grade, a starter resource on the Langmuir project, the W4. What we really like, our company, what we really like about where we are is a few things. Our location, we're very close to Timmins. That's an established mining camp. We have very good grade. So in addition to location, our grade, we have a 1% resource to start and we anticipate there's even more mineralization at that sort of grade. And then our third big thing is we have a massive land package. We think there's tremendous potential across our project where we've got over 9,000 hectares and we've got 30 kilometers of strike. And I'll show you a bit of that. But also we anticipate there's additional land in this new district that we can get our hands on. So there's three things that EV Nickel are doing, is doing right now. Our first is that we're finding as much nickel as we can at Langmuir, which is our, our starter project with our starter resource, W4. Secondly, we intend to get more land in the Shaw Dome. And then third, we are going to begin developing a clean nickel business. So that's something that I'll speak throughout this, pro this presentation about. Uh, for us, that means the lowest possible carbon of the nickel we're producing. And we think we're very well positioned for that. So three simple things, finding more nickel at Langmuir, getting our hands on more land in the Shaw Dome, and thirdly, beginning to put together the pieces of a clean nickel business. So I won't spend much time on nickel. We are positive about the metal, and we think it's very interesting for a few reasons. One, we have a huge new demand category coming on. So depending on what forecast you choose for electric vehicles going forward, it is going to be a significant change to a metal which is currently a stainless steel story. So almost all of demand for nickel today is with stainless steel. We're bolting on a whole new demand category looking forward. And we think, as I have on the slide on the, on the chart on the right, we think there's going to be 
a difference between the demand and the supply. So for people like me who are coming with new supply, it's a very interesting dynamic to come into. So I'm bullish about the nickel price. And it's also interesting when you compare against other battery metals with other battery metals, for example, lithium. Lithium is going to be a new global metal. Right now, you already have a global uh, base metal, the nickel story with stainless steel. So there's already a demand supply balance. It's not just going to be growing up with the new electric vehicle demand. So it makes nickel different than lithium or cobalt, which are going to grow with EVs. But nickel, we already have a global industry with nickel, but it's not uh, going to meet the demand forecast with this new demand category. And if you get into the EVs, it's very interesting to look, of course, at the EV manufacturers. I know that Tesla and Rivian, companies like that, they get a lot of attention, but the huge growth in future EVs is going to be when the original uh, equipment manufacturers, the OEMs, so the typical car companies, are transitioning to become completely EV. And if you add up, as we've tried to do on this slide, all of the plans for these other car companies, it really is a revolution. So we see now that the electric vehicle revolution is underway. So every junior nickel company needs to talk about what Tesla is doing, but it's very interesting to look at what is changing for this new demand into nickel from the EV companies. So it's different than the demand from the stainless steel companies. They're forcing nickel companies to look at the footprint, so the carbon cost of their supply chain. So as, and we've talked to these EV companies, as they're looking to source new nickel supply, they are pushing the producers to be as efficient as possible and move towards a carbon neutral product. So that's really where our focus is. We can deliver clean nickel from where we are in Northern Ontario. So it's interesting to look at what's happened to the nickel business currently. So right now, nickel is a globally integrated supply chain. So nickel comes out the door in Sudbury, Ontario, for example, and then it is processed in either Quebec or Europe, and then it goes around again, uh, and, and it is further processed in Asia. So what has developed in the world with nickel supply chains is hugely complicated. And it's very interesting to think about what Elon Musk said at Battery Day with Tesla. So he did say the world needs more nickel and he encouraged nickel producers to get moving because he would give them a very large contract. That is what everybody focuses on. But he also pointed out the complication, how complicated the current supply chain is with nickel traveling around the world to finish off. So we think there's a really interesting opportunity to step in with new nickel business with low carbon cost and a straightforward supply chain. And that's really where EV nickel is positioning itself. So what we are is we're on a new district south of Timmins, Ontario called the Shaw Dome. We think it has a wonderful location. Timmins is an historic mining camp. There is a, a long history of gold production primarily out of Timmins. And very importantly, it is serviced by clean hydropower. So everything we can electrify with our operations, because the power is generated with hydro, it comes with a very, very low carbon cost. So our project, Langmuir, as we've outlined on this slide, is within 50 kilometers of Timmins. We have over 9,000 hectares. We have 30 kilometers of strike that we can explore. And it has easy access to roads and to power. And the thing that I really like, because a big part of our story will be exploration, the thing that I really like is we are in an area that has had historic high-grade production. So our starter resource at W4 is at 1%. That is the sort of grade that gets turned into mines. Where we are on the Shaw Dome, there has been very good, very good grade actual production. So when I go and explore, I want to explore 
where nickel has been found before. And these are at the grades that get turned into mines. So our project Langmuir, let me speak about that for a moment. It was discovered in 2007, the W4 resource. And then in 2010, the resource report came out. In 2021, EV Nickel acquired the project. We initially did a new technical report. We reran all of the geophysics and taking that geophysics, which I'll talk about, we targeted drilling last year. We completed that drilling and it was successful in that it confirmed that the W4 extends up and down the trend and goes deeper. So there's a lot of potential for the W4. This year we're doing further drilling, which I'll talk about, um, and we plan to have some sort of resource out later this year. If I talk about the financing, so EV Nickel acquired the Langmuir project from Rogue Resources last year for some cash up front, a bunch of shares, and then EV Nickel completed a financing. Then there was an IPO last December. The great news for this audience is since that IPO, the stock is much cheaper and I'll talk about that. So we did an IPO in December, raised money, and that's the funding that's required for this year's technical. So we have the money in the bank to pay for the work we plan to do. And we're looking forward to finding more nickel at Langmuir. So the W4, based on the work that was done, we had over 22,000 meters who were drilled for the initial resource. We added over 4,000 meters last year. It comes up to surface, we have between zero and 20 meters of overburden. So it's very good grade, very close to surface. And the majority of the grade, the majority of the resource is open pitable. So it's within 170 meters of surface. So if I look at our resource, again, we have close to 15 million pounds in indicated nickel at 1%. So that's a very good grade. That's the sort of grade that gets turned into nickel mines. And that's the sort of grade that we think there's more of, more nickel mineralization across our over 9,000 hectares that we have to explore. So last year, the first thing my company did was we came in, we took all of the historic data for the geophysics and we reran all of the numbers. When we reran all of the numbers, we identified 16 electromagnetic trends, so EM trends. From those 16, we targeted six as high priority targets. All of this was done blind from the geology. So they just used the geophysics. One of those six targets was the W4 zone that had already been drilled, but there's an additional five targets which have not been tested yet. So I'm really excited to come in to a property that is in an area where there has been nickel production and to see this many areas light up with the geophysics. So we're drilling right now TZ3, which is on the Western side of our very large land package. It's never been drilled before. And that's our first target with the phase two drilling, which is underway right now. So the work we did last year, last summer, the phase one drilling was around the existing W4. So we did over 4,000 meters of drilling, 20 holes, and our objective was to confirm that the mineralization continues up and down the trend. So we did that, we did confirm that W4 can be bigger by confirming the mineralization continues. And we also had some very nice hits. So we had over 8.6% nickel in one hole, that was EV2101, and also our nickel tenors. So that's the estimated content of nickel in 100% sulfide. Our nickel tenors are very high. 18% to higher than 40%. So what that means is when we're able to turn W4 into a producing mine, the concentrate that would come out would have very high percentage, which gets you even more benefit on the market. So we're very excited having run 
uh, more drilling to confirm the size of the deposit, which means the mineralization continues. So we're gonna get back in there this year and learn a little more about that. And then the nickel tenors being very high. So phase two, the work we're doing right now, we have 10,000 meters of drilling planned. We're partnered with a drilling contractor who is a local First Nations company, which is very important to our company that we want to have local suppliers. So we have drillers from Northern Ontario. And it's wonderful that we're partnered with a group which is First Nations owned. So we're again, going after those five priority targets this year. The first one is TZ3. The drill is moving to that right now, and we hope to have results in the next couple months. So that's our first of the high priority targets. So we're going after that one, and then we're gonna go back east on our project and learn a little more about W4, including our meta metallurgy testing. So getting the samples out for MET testing and hopefully confirm more mineralization on the trend around W4. So we're really excited for this year's drilling, the phase two drilling. And as I've mentioned, we have the funding for that in hand now. So again, our project, the Langmuir project is a very large land package and an area close to Timmins, but we're the only publicly traded junior that is focused on exploration on the Shaw Dome district. So it's in an area which has had historic production at good grades, the type of grades that get turned into nickel mines. If I was to compare the Shaw Dome, our district, to another historic area for mining, so the Kambalda Dome, we're into comatiates. So it's a comatitic deposit. So the geology of the Shaw Dome, which I have mapped on the left on this slide, is very similar to the Kambalda Dome in Western Australia. So Kambalda has produced lots of nickel. I, I draw your attention to this because the size of our land package, the size of the Shaw Dome area in that dotted box on the left is the same as the map on the right. The Kambalda Dome in that same size of land has produced over 50 million tons of great grade nickel since the 60s. So there's been a huge amount of production off of a small land area in Western Australia. And we think that it's a similar geology at the Shaw Dome, it's just underexplored. So our trends go east-west in the Kambalda, they go north-south, but we're excited to figure out what's on our east-west trends because once you discover one deposit in this type of geology, they tend to be followed up, additional trends, additional deposits down the trend. So again, ours is summarized as we have great location, great grade, and we think there's huge potential with the land package and how much trend we have going along. So I'll open that up now, Gilbert, if anybody has questions about EV Nickel. Thank you, Sean. So the first one is coming from Larry. He's asking, what's the, I think he's asking, what's the potential of the nickel resource in your project again? Yeah, hey, I, I could tell you the potential. I know we have great quality grade in the deposit that's been explored, and we have a massive land package that has not yet been explored. So I think there is there is huge potential based on based on the size of land package we have and the way that these deposits tend to be located, where when you discover one, they tend to be down the trend. So I can't put numbers on the potential, but I do know the size of our land package. Okay, we have been time to take one more question here is from Michael. He said, why is it like clean nickel? Is, why is that important for, for investors to, to know about it? Yeah, so uh, we have followed in this industry between the difference between class one nickel, the nickel sulfides and, and the remaining. And I, I think that with this new demand category, with the EVs coming in, the obligation is on them to explain when they produce their vehicle, what the, the carbon content that goes into that vehicle. So for the first time, it's different than buying a stainless steel frying pan 
if you're buying a Tesla, you want to know what the footprint is of all of the inputs. And if they're buying, they're buying a couple hundred kilograms of nickel, they're going to have to explain to their customer the footprint. And having clean nickel, I believe, is going to be a new category. Class one will split between the, the high cost carbon and the low cost carbon. And that's really where I wanna be in that low cost carbon uh, nickel production. Okay, thank you indeed, Sean, for addressing the questions. Thanks everybody, take care. Thank you, Sean.